Hey there, nerds, it's me, Dr. Jordan Breeding, and you're watching another episode of Your Brain on Crack, the only show on the internet not afraid to ask the types of hard-hitting questions that inevitably lead to hard-hitting penis joke answers, and the only show on Cracked where my eyelashes just look like this, leave me alone. Today, we'll uncomfortably diagnose. Most movies don't usually strive for any grand, thought-provoking statements more provocative than, hey, I think that genocidal water goblins are bad, actually. And yet, sometimes the way they go about defeating Admiral Gobble Gobble Corn is so bad bonkers, they accidentally reveal, oh no, the writers have some really weird thoughts about how they just assume gender works. For example. Look, I'm not afraid to say it. Sex is pretty great. 10 out of 10 would recommend two thumbs uh, up way up there. But it's important to remember that I'm a legal adult of sound mind and fully conscious about two thirds of the time if I'm having a really good week. But movie men, by contrast, aren't so worried about those things. They're just like horny Oliver Twists, walking up to any random woman begging, please ma'am, could I have some more? Some more sex please, my lady. And we don't think twice about it because Oliver's a boy, therefore the only thing in the world he wants is afternoon sex soup. <laughs> But let's do some thought experiments with now Olivia Twist and allow the freaking horror to just wash over us. All right, let's get the most obvious recent example out of the way. It is flat out bonkers that the writers of Wonder Woman 1984 couldn't think of any way to bring back Chris Pine without him mentally hijacking some random dude's penis and using it to pleasure an 800 year old goddess. Why did you say that? This is a comic book movie for crap's sake. The hijacking happens with literal magic. Why couldn't they just use that same magic to conjure him out of thin air or transform a particularly striking oak tree into a stiff wooded human for a while? There's no in-universe reason why you'd have to inhabit an existing hottie's naughty body. <sighs> just upset. Yeah. What you mean. Imagine some hypothetical multiverse scenario where Gene Roddenberry is finally allowed to release his long-awaited Justice League sequel where Lois Lane has died. In it, Superman will be so horned up for that sweet ginger loving, he'll find a way to bring her back in the body of some random innocent BuzzFeed journalist who he then plows repeatedly, superly. <laughs> that feels weird, yeah? Too easy? Okay, how about Tom Hanks and Big? Sure, the again magical and not subject to any existing laws of reality fortune teller box thing enlarges everything. Yeah, even little Tom. Honey? But Big Tom's brain doesn't age a millisecond. There's a reason it's age of consent laws and not height and weight limit of consent laws. Presumably there's a certain amount of life that needs to be lived before gaining the necessary emotional maturity to enter into a sexual relationship with an adult. This 12 year old child's first sexual encounter is with a 20 something grown ass fine ass woman. I imagine that'll greatly affect his sexuality later in life. Having trouble seeing this as an issue? Imagine a 12 year old girl suddenly physically maturing and then going down on Mr. Rogers. Not a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Not beautiful at all. He helped you. Come. And speaking of underage sexual encounters, I've already discussed how upsetting it is that Blank Check sends a preteen boy on several dates with a fully developed CIA agent woman who he ultimately makes out with. And that's creepy predatory grooming as is, but imagine it flipped. Now a young girl with a lot of money is charmed by an adult man into taking him on several dates while he gathers information on her and also runs with her through water fountains until they're adorably pervertedly soaking wet. Later, he kisses her full on the mouth and says, he'll wait for her bad day in the neighborhood. The worst day. Someone has hurt my friend and not just on his face. But hey, at least all these characters are supposedly of sound mind. What about freaking Forrest Gump? Without getting all into it, I personally believe that it's bad for a woman with AIDS to have sex with a mentally handicapped man who's been obsessing over her for decades. But man, it is a lot worse the other way. But hey, at least the screenwriter says that his unproduced sequel, Gump Day, would have started with Little Gump's little boy having AIDS. So, that sucks. Irrespective of gender. 
You know, speaking of genders, or more specifically biological sex, did you know that two in three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35? <gasps> I mean, I've still got a few years and hopefully hairs to go before I hit that shiny, smooth milestone, but that's the whole point. Once you're full on bald, there's no amount of electroshock therapy or spicy wing eating that'll bring all your hair back. What you need to do is be preventative and keeps the hair you got. And that's what's great about Keeps. Through them, a licensed doctor will review your information online so you don't even have to go outside or put on pants to get hair better. Nailed it! And they'll recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you specifically. Then your treatment is shipped directly to your door every three months. And even better, Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA approved medications for hair loss, which keeps it affordable so you can spend your money on more important things like hats. Because treatments usually take between four to six months to start, just so you know. So the sooner you start using, the sooner the more hair you can save, and the better looking your head banging will be. So, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash cracked, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash cracked. Again, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash cracked. In the real world, human life is a precious thing to be protected at all costs. In a movie, lives are to be snuffed out as punchlines. <laughs> human bodies are blasted into pieces anytime a film needs to pick up the momentum. And when I say human bodies, I specifically mean man bodies, or dad bodies, or daddy bodies. Yeah, we talk about how filmmakers and moviegoers are desensitized to violence, but that's not entirely true. It's only violence against men. In this fleeting moment of awesomeness from Batman v Superman that thankfully has nothing to do with a physically handicapped man's jar of piss, Batman bursts up through the floor and pounds a group of thugs in a ground up batch. Pretty fun, right? Now imagine it's a warehouse full of women. Everything else is the same. They're still armed, still up to no good, but all the heads that Batman smashes into the floor have ponytails and eyeshadow, and every time one of their collarbones gets crushed, it's a woman's voice screaming out in pain. I doubt that sequence even makes it into the theater. Somebody at this studio would get Zack Snyder some counseling as soon as they saw the script. It's not because women would be no physical match for Batman, because nobody is a match for Batman. He's tearing through those guys like a rat terrier loose in a hamster cage. The fact is, that kind of violence towards women would just hit you in the gut. When it's dudes, it's either awesome or hilarious. You can do this with any action movie, though. Imagine watching Return of the Jedi, only every time a stormtrooper head is bashed in by an Ewok, you hear a female scream. Ah! It would be chilling. The cops would kick in George Lucas's door to check his freezer for a crowd of female corpses. I have a knack for it. I studied it very well. And remember in the two towers when Legolas and Gimli whimsically count out their kills? Can you picture that being the same kind of fun if they were female orcs? Ha <laughs> ha, got that one in the ovaries, 17. In fact, find any movie in which a human death is treated as slapstick, make the victims female, and you are left with a video suitable only for a serial killer's crawl space. Imagine Indiana Jones just hilariously shooting three women with a single bullet. At the very least, it becomes deeply uncomfortable and suddenly you remember, hey, wasn't Steven Spielberg kind of going through a rough divorce when he made this movie? <laughs> and no, I'm obviously not demanding Hollywood show more women getting butchered to make it all equal, and I'm not even really demanding that they show us fewer dead dudes. I just feel like it's worth pointing out how we've definitely been conditioned to react a certain way to on-screen brutality. And the difference between dread and hilarity is usually whether or not the victim has a penis. That's weird, right? Maybe I shouldn't have even brought it up. I'm sorry. Unless. I've got a hypothesis that rom-coms would be no fun at all if you flip the genders. So let's start with a quick case study. While You Were Sleeping is a movie about Lucy, a cute, plucky woman who works in the ticket booth for a train station. She crushes from afar on a guy named Peter, whom she's never actually met, when one day he falls onto the tracks and into a coma. Lucy pretends to be his fiance so she can see him in the hospital room, since only family are allowed to know, okay, already we're in restraining order territory. And you can see how this is the beginning of a horror movie if Lucy is a dude. But anyway, 
Peter's family eventually shows up and Lucy continues the lie, even though deceiving a family about their comatose son goes well beyond soap opera villain sh**. Oh, God, you smell good. Over the course of a few weeks, the family accepts her as one of their own, since that's what she claims to be. And right when you think it can't get any worse, she ends up falling in love with Peter's brother, Jack, forcing Jack into the greatest moral quandary of his life. She's seducing him while also manipulating him into thinking he's betraying his comatose brother. Welcome to the family. Oh, thank you. When Peter awakens from his coma, he naturally has no memory of Lucy, but he decides to do the right thing and to propose to her again. And uh, despite now being in love with Jack, Lucy accepts. And when her boss asks her why she's doing such an unspeakably shitty thing, she says, it's because she's sad and the family is rich. You might as well shoot grandma. Again, this is portrayed as a cute Sandra Bullock romantic romp. We're supposed to be somehow rooting for her through all this, despite the fact that she's like one diaper and a taser and a penis away from a gritty true crime documentary. Another day, another day. Thankfully, while literally at the altar, she admits that she made the whole thing up. Oh, she's gonna go with her heart after all, but wait. How mind f***ed is Peter right now? He fell into a coma and woke up with a fiance he doesn't know, but then oops, she turned out to be a con artist stalker in love with his brother, what? That should be the opening paragraph of Peter's reasonably justified suicide letter, but no. Lucy runs away in shame and then Jack still shows up to propose to her and he brings along the whole family and Peter, I guess, joins a cult because what the hell else can you do at that point? Pull the plug. You are sick. Imagine a man blasting 12 million megawatts of gaslight into a woman's life like that. Suddenly it'd be all problematic and truly twisted sh but that's just one movie. Consider others like a man pretending to be a woman to join a female soccer team and bunk with an attractive, often nude female roommate he falls in love with in He's the Man. Okay then. It is merciful Jesus. Or a man trying to emotionally manipulate a woman until she leaves him in How to Lose a Girl in 10 Days. And I've mentioned before the weirdness of the sh triangle of love in the notebook. We're back to that. But that's also basically the plot of Bridget Jones, Reality Bites, and a hundred other movies where a woman flips back and forth between two men and is a cheating dirtbag in the process. Tits pervert more like. The straight rom-com genre survives almost entirely on the protagonist's lack of dicks. I'll never understand what's so amusing about penises. <laughs> Speaking of dicks, another day, another day. specifically of the gumshoe variety, let's talk about femme fatales for a second. Typically found in hard-boiled detective and or film noir films, not only do these lusty ladies possess vaginas and legs that stretch for, for miles, The, those sexy legs are almost always used to seduce good men into doing terrible things. Women who use their sexuality to achieve a certain outcome are basically always evil, or at least incredibly conflicted. Their husky-voiced, red-lipped sex appeals the entire source of their power and evidently their naughtiness, because this is not a two-way rain-soaked back alley. Pinot Noir, an ode to black penis. See, attractive flirtatious men with dicks that stretch for miles are conversely basically always the hero. James Bond skillfully uses his little PP7 to turn villainous beauties to the light side. Uh, you know me, <laughs> I gotta be James. <laughs> Bond may later use his other PP7 to shoot those women into beautiful corpses, but they deserved it. Because whereas men can use their rippling pecs and overwhelming chest hair for the good of humanity, overt female sexuality can only be used to destroy, apparently. Now, some of this comes from the true history of sex espionage. As early as the 1920s, Russians were using ballerinas to have sexy spy sex with important marks in order to elicit valuable information alongside less valuable juices. But the Russians aren't the only ones with attractive ladies, known as sparrows, and the past hundred years of spy craft have been absolutely moist with their fielded bed work. Moist. But women aren't the only ones capable of setting a honey trap. We also know there's such a thing as honey dicking. I bet you got him in here as a honey dick just in case I'm gay, but I'm not. There are several examples throughout history of men, called ravens, also sleeping with the enemy for information. It's basically a reverse Michael Jordan Mia Hamm Gatorade campaign, but sweatier. I'm not stop it. So why don't we see these hunks in noir movies? Those bro fatales? Well, for two reasons, and before you say anything, no, the reasons aren't both testicles. The first seems to be an extension of the assumption that men can't help but have sex with anything that walks within 10 feet of them. Men are evidently so ready for sex at any moment that it's clearly the number one way to corrupt them without offering them a chance to play the new Halo beta or whatever. Movies still mostly assume that sex isn't even really for women, so the only thing that could bring down a virtuous woman is shopping, am I right, fellas? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. 
what you mean. But the second reason is that a majority of these ravens actually slept with men. After all, men historically have been more likely to hold positions of power and privilege, so you know, you gotta get that dick. One way or another. I got some stink dick. <laughs> Yo, my dick stinks. But apparently that's not a film anybody's willing to make or trust audiences with. Until now. The night was moist. Too moist. Are you Jordan? The way he talked was as moist as the night. I bet his dick stretched for miles. My dick stretches for miles, by the way. I knew it. If you're here to ask me to do evil, I won't do it. What if I show you my miles-long dick? Yeah, all right, I'll do some evil. <laughs>